podcast, we prove that no team is infallible. See what upsets teams deliver with our games today. Clear skies, though, have returned to Los Angeles as people play paparazzi for Optic on their arrival. We'll see if they can take down 100 Thieves in the first game of the day as they headed to the stage just moments ago. Afro Moo leading the charge for that squad. Crawley bringing up the rear. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the LCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we highlight some of the unexpected heroes and show you what makes a dive comp work until the timer reaches zero and we jump into Champion Select. It's good to be back. I got to admit, it's pretty unnatural <laughs> to, to be watching the NALCS and not be up here with you guys. Uh -huh. How did you guys manage? Uh, it was it was pretty good actually. We had Freak up here. That was the beginning of, of what your led of into the downfall of the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, the standings show that no team remains undefeated as Team Liquid sits at seven and one with Cloud Nine at six and two and FlyQuest just behind at five and three. Hundred Thieves, Golden Guardians, Clutch Gaming, and Optic Gaming sit just outside of playoff position, about halfway into the split. Later on in game four of the day, we'll see that battle for second place between Cloud9 and FlyQuest. Give me your thoughts on that matchup. It's a big one. Yeah, I mean, C9, I think versus Garda is the clear-cut best team in the league right now. They show a good combination of player skill, good understanding of what play style they want to go through, and obviously have good teamwork to back it all up. Meanwhile, FlyQuest here, if they win, then they will take down, you know, this clear second best team in the league and really put that stamp that people are looking for to seal, yes, FlyQuest here for the top of the standings because they've been performing extremely well, um, but yet they have so many players that aren't used to being in the spotlight, you know, at the forefront, and I really think they have what it takes. I think one of the most intriguing matchups is that top lane matchup. Of course, you've got Licorice, who proved himself beyond measure last year in his rookie split up against the new hot rookie in Viper. Yeah, I'm casting it uh, later today, and we're going to have a featured matchup here. We've got Viper. Not only is he kind of the new uh, North American rookie <laughs> or whatever for the top lane, uh, but he had two successful games on Riven, and I think that confidence of playing your main champion, a carry champion on the LCS stage is going to go a really long way uh, for him as a rookie LCS player. He's kind of the hope of solo queue players and like all those <laughs> yeah, like, Riven yeah. one trick I can play Riven like, You can LCS. do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love it. Hey, it's great to see players on their signature champions, especially when they are viable and find success. We'll see if that momentum carries through into their match today against Cloud9. That match does come later in the day. This week kicks off with Arrow versus Bang in the bot lane as Optic and 100 Thieves face off. We follow that with Team Liquid up against Echo Fox in two more games before TSM and Counter Logic Gaming face off in that fifth game of the day. To hear about Optic versus 100 Thieves, our first game of the day, let's send it over to Riven's Irene for a quick breakdown. Thank you, Dash. And while both of these teams have had some pretty rocky starts, it's hard to say that Optic's 2-6 record is an accurate description of that team's overall strengths, Irene. Yeah, because especially the five players that we've seen recently, they have an 0-4 record. Yeah. But if you dive a little bit deeper and you don't just look at the results, these team members here, they're actually doing quite well. They've gotten first blood in every single one of their games, so they're 8-8 eight and eight in first bloods. And this Optic roster has the best gold difference at 15 in the entire league. They are the best early game team that we have right now in the LCS. They are struggling to close out the games, right. though, which has been an issue. And when they have that type of issue, you have to look at the shot calling of the team, and it needs to be looked at here. This roster started playing in week three, so it's not unexpected to have an issue like that with synergy and shot calling. But now that we're in week five, this is the time for Optic to look at that. And honestly, if they have to look at it again, it may be time for another mix-up. Yeah, they have been switching things back and forth, and we'll have to see what they do going into that game because it's a game to prove for each of them. There has to be a win on either side. Yeah, honestly, that's the big thing here that we're looking at for Optic, especially up against 100 Thieves, because 100 Thieves, they were the macro team last year. They've had a little bit of a struggle here in this uh, yeah. 2019 season. So if Optic are able to have a good early game and close it out, it's something that 100 Thieves might struggle against. All right, so we'll see how that matchup shakes out. Until game one, we are stepping away. Countdown returns in just two and a half. Welcome back to the LCS Countdown, about 22 minutes away from game one. As the league enters its halfway point, we're seeing different strategies teams can execute on. So our very own Professor Kobe wanted to give you the 101 on what makes a certain team comp work. Kobe, take it away. <laughs> 
Thank you, Dash, and welcome to the Anatomy of a Team Comp. We're gonna be exploring several ideas over the day, you know, dive compositions, standard compositions, poke compositions, but we're gonna start out with dive compositions and what exactly makes dive compositions work in the current meta. Now, first of all, you're gonna need three main components, mobility, hard CC, and most importantly, damage to kill off the priority target. Great example here, Cloud9, uh, dive Composition versus Clutch Gaming. They have the Shen, the Nocturne, and the Galio, all perfect with their ultimates to be able to dive onto Piglet's Sivir over here for Clutch Gaming. So we're gonna roll this replay, really good example. They set up around the dragon as soon as they get vision onto this Sivir. Uh, immediately gonna have the Nocturne ultimate with the Shen on back of them. And as you can see, the Galio waiting to use the Galio ultimate to come in and create some more space for them. These two here are the Peel champions that Clutch Gaming have drafted to try and defend against this dive. Lee Sin has the ultimate for knockback. Alstar's gonna try and use the Headbutt and Pulverize. Let's resume the uh, replay now and we'll see how with the Nocturne ultimate on, they are able to get in front of the Alistar. He messes up his combo. Lyra also never gets off uh, his kick. And with the double flashes from both Zazel and Svenskaren and Niski's ultimate coming in to cut off any extra defenses, they absolutely destroy their target. Once the damage is done for a dive comp, your goal has been accomplished. Everybody else on the enemy team has to scatter and they don't pose any more threat to you. So that's the main goal. Now, here are some of the win conditions that you wanna go for early though. Uh, they're fairly straightforward for dive compositions, but you wanna be aggressive, set up vision early uh, between the objectives and in the jungle so you can then dive on these targets while they're in the open, catch them unawares. Also, you wanna play them into low mobility carries if possible. Xerath and Ash are perfect examples. And actually, we have Power of Evil on CLG as a very good example that Optic decided to draft some very hard engage on to destroy this low mobility carry. Camille, Lissandra, and Leona, all perfectly equipped to do the exact same thing. So let's throw another uh, example clip here. And you can see more about the setup. Now, they have a very deep vision worn here in the jungle. Power of Evil, their target carry, they've had in their mind the whole time, uh, has walked right over it. You can already see Dardock looking straight at him. Then we've got the Leona and the Lissandra all ready with flashes and ultimates available to take down this guy. If you look at the minimap as well, uh, CLG are fairly spread out. So with the speed uh, that they're able to execute this is very, very key, so CLG can't react. Now, let's roll this replay, uh, and you'll be able to see Dardock immediately goes over, they answer flash for lash, uh, flash, the Hextech ultimatum is a perfect ultimate to set these up, and you can see they're even bringing in a teleport as well. The commitment of the entire team is so important for dive compositions to work out. If we resume the replay here, Power of Evil, the Xerath, he's already flashed away and used his cleanse. It doesn't matter. All three of them, again, flash, use their ultimates, take down this DPS, and then again, after the DPS, the heart of the team uh, on the enemy team has been taken out, they have to scatter, they have to give up the objective afterwards, and that's how you gain your big momentum uh, with a dive composition. Uh, now, if you wanna play a dive composition at home, there are some things that you might wanna avoid. Metas where Janna and Lulu, these peeling supports are super strong. Try and avoid those. Also, in the uh, champion select, you might wanna throw some bans at Lucian, Ezreal, mobile AD carries that you don't wanna have such a hard time chasing down. Uh, that is going to clean it up for the first episode here of Team Comp 101. We're gonna send it back to Dash and Mark uh, at the desk. Come on back over, Kobe. You know, hi. Mark fell asleep during class. class. You fell asleep during class? Never. Come on, Mark. No. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I was a great student in school. Don't worry but about that. But not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. totally. Uh, uh, it's too bad because I missed class entirely uh -huh. today. So at least you attended class in terms of attendance. Hey, I was you a were great here, man. attendance. You were here. Just don't ask me what he said. <laughs> you know what? You get an A. Woo! You at least get a C. I'm a very kind hey, teacher. Hey, participation. He was award. here. He showed up. You know, I think uh, in reference though to this to the segment itself, I think dive comps have to be one of the most fun comps to actually execute well. Be because <laughs> right because of that whole idea of yeah. middle, you blow someone up super fast. And, you know, if, if everything goes right, the other team doesn't even really have a chance to respond. There's immediate gratification yes. as well. <laughs> if you're part of the dive composition and you successfully destroy your target, everybody's feeling good. I'd also say they're the easiest to play in a lot of ways. Agreed there it's like, as well. It's so clear what it's trying to do. You just pick a target, everyone goes on them, right. and, and that's all you really need to think about. Yes, there's the vision control setup and invading to actually play it well at a competitive level, but for people at home wanting to play, 
just pick a bunch of people with ultimates that go in. <laughs> and that's why I'm excited to hear the breakdown maybe in later weeks around peel compositions because those are one of the tougher to execute. Now, hype is a fickle beast and can follow the strangest trends. So we wanted to highlight some heroes, rather, who may have flown under the radar when it comes to getting their due praise. For this week, we have Cloud9's Niski, FlyQuest's Viper, and TSM's Acadian. First up, let's talk about Cloud9's Niski. Yeah, he's blended in so perfectly with Cloud9 that we almost kind of forget he's new. We're still talking about Licorice in the top lane being like the NA's new superstar. We have Sneaky memeing it up in the bot lane. And in a lot of ways, we haven't been talking about like how well Niski has actually integrated because it's been so smooth. I mean, they've, he's had a couple carry games. He's been a bit of a beast, actually, in, in the early game. He's a super good player. And so because of that, you actually don't talk about him as much as you should. And one of the biggest points for me is that he has fit into multiple roles when Cloud9 want to execute a dive composition, Aatrox. he's there with the Galio or the Aatrox. When they want to do poke composition, he's there with the Zoe. Very different roles, yet he's been able to fit into multiple styles for the team, and I think that's important when you have a coach like Reaper. Really cool, and a contrast to their kind of their year last year, where it took them a little while to ramp up. They may have started slightly hot, but we did have that lull mm -hmm. in the midpoint of the season. We'll see if they can keep it running through this spring split. Next up, FlyQuest Viper. We already talked about his big top lane matchup today against Licorice. Yeah, and this guy, we had a uh, Hooney on the dive. He ranked Viper number two top laner in Woo! the North American LCS for right now, um, right behind Licorice. So that just adds a little bit more extra spice to this matchup where he's going up against uh, one of the best that we have ever had. Also a native North American top laner. And he is going to, uh, Possibly display some more ribbon games. I, I heard uh, that that is something that they're very willing to pull out as far as split pushing as well. I, I hope so. And it's crazy to hear that, like, he's potentially number two in the league now behind Licorice when coming in. It was like, oh, well, he's a downgrade from Flame. Yeah. This might be holding FlyQuest back, even though there's the Poe Belt or upgrade in the mid lane. And the fact that he might be the superstar of this team that's going to help push them over the top and get them uh, into that second place position if he's able to match up well versus Licorice is crazy from a beginning of season perspective. Uh, let's uh, finally talk about TSM's Acadian here. This guy has surprised and pleasure, uh, uh, pleasantly surprised rather this split so far. Especially the meme game. Like I'm super <laughs> happy he went in, typed all that stuff up. Some players feel like robots at times and to see him having fun, which I think is really important, yeah. uh, was really good to see. And I, even though they won, like I would want to see it even if they lost again, but uh, he has been super pivotal to their, their early game. Yeah, I, especially on teams like TSM, where if you lose, the, the players have a very very high tendency to get clam up, kind of get very sad. You know, they're, they're expected mm -hmm. to win all the time. But if you can keep getting out there, have the personality, trash talk as well beforehand, then back it up sometimes, you get rewarded as well. And yeah. I think you see the early game stats, like the super high four percentage and kills and assists. Like, that's what TSM has been lacking, it feels like, for over two years. So, like, the fact that he's kind of come in here, we haven't mm -hmm. talked a ton about him, but feels like he's re-energized and made the most aggressive TSM in over two years is huge for me. First yeah. team to take down Team Liquid, that's got to feel good. Yeah, that too. We're stepping away, but when we are as we go, rather Mark and Kobe get to relive their day with free. Enjoy. We'll see you afterwards. I want to state that people watching at home should not, I repeat, should not attempt this at home. You get your prediction wrong, you will be handcuffed to Freak for 24 hours. That's a little tight. Uh, you know what? That's where we are. This is looking good. All right, we're this hanging out now. Good. This is perfect. When we can go Pearson, when we can go double lift, um, when something special happens. Thank you. <laughs> What is worse being <laughs> for 24 hours? I just started, but I gotta tell you, some box actually not that bad. Okay, that's not part of the deal. I can press Q. I got it. All right, all right, we're just playing it. Ready? Watch this. Wait, what? Free! Who put Smite on out? Thank you. Okay, I have advantage. All right, yeah, 14 hits. Why are you rolling with your shaft? It's my lucky hand. You can only crit my left hand. Random. No. Speaking of random, you take five damage.
our wrath will be swift today. Yeah. Am I right, boys? Yeah. Extremely swift. Yeah. I think this is instantly going on my check. These peasant thinking we aren't even good. Lemao. <laughs> Lem foul. L M F A O, bro. Oh, that's how you say it. <laughs> I need jungle the gang, but uh... <laughs> yeah, we can't have everything. Go on. <laughs> let's, let's keep it realistic. Uh, you know it, right? Oh, whatever. no idea. Uh, is, it, is it a Turkish meme? Why is it instantly? It's just it must be a Turkish meme if we haven't heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're top level memesters, so yeah. we've heard yeah, every meme. That's true. You say one thing. Marginally memeable, and you're gone. Stay in the state of flow, guys. You know it. Uh, I don't need to tell you anything because. Why are you talking? The Nas actually. <laughs> Thomas really getting well right now. The Nas. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, no, he's not. The Nas. 144 hertz. Make sure your scripts are on. Make sure your scripts are enabled. <laughs> oh my god, man. <laughs> There's some meme overload today. Yeah. Look, look, look. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I canceled yeah. the lantern. Sorry. Okay, I'm watching you. Catch up the pick. Catch up the pick. Catch up the pick. And I'm keeping everybody. Catch up the pick. Are we fighting us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, coming. So much, I'm so much. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm flashing, flashing. Yeah, the entrance soon. The entrance soon. I'm cool. I could. Flash, 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 Nice, nice, nice. Can we get nice. Can we end? Yep. Listen, yeah. and, 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 and. Just hold Nexus, hold Nexus. Hold Nexus, hold Nexus. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. We hit it, it makes us hit Nexus. Nexus, 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 we got it. Ah! All right, I'm gonna preface this with didn't ask, so we can be uh, serious. Yeah. Okay, so don't say did not ask at the end of this, okay? Thank okay. you. Okay, you're, you're safe. Okay, I'm safe. Okay, so let's talk about the game plan a bit. Okay, okay. I'm gonna ask you to win now. Yeah, okay. Going now? Yeah, okay. Team with you, go bottom, guys. Go bottom. Nice, right, good nice job, guys. Good shit. Rush. Yeah, stopwatch, though. Don't stopwatch. Don't stopwatch. Don't stopwatch. Don't stopwatch. Do it now. Do it now. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Give me, give me. Yeah, good job, man. Really good win condition on top side. After this, I will base and I will get tempo on top side, okay? Oh, nice. Oh, nice. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not there. Yeah. Lee, 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 Lee. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. will come from base eventually. Hooking Alster, hooking Alster. It's fine. Back, 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 back. Nice. Keep you doing the base. When you, when you see it, when you see it. Okay. I'll, I'll go for seal and we're just trying wait, to... Wait, wait, they're off of it. Oh, there's oh, yeah, four here, four here. Yeah, keep going, keep going. I'll just base, I'll just base. Lee, 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 nice. Nice, let's go, let's go. Nice, nice, nice. Mid, 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 mid. Just kill them for KDA. Google shoot stats for Google stats for Google stats, guys. TSM! TSM will finally slay Liquid. back to the LCS countdown. It's prediction time. So let's see what you guys got for me this week. Our five games today. Of course, we do have that battle for second place in the fourth game of the day. And oh, oh like, my God. Thank God High broke this one up. High has departed from you guys there Wait. in that fourth game of the day. Kobe, I think uh, I... you predicted clutch in game three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I, didn't, right? I didn't predict GG. Did, you, All right. did your phone autocorrect to Golden Guardians? No, I, I can confirm because no, I, get, I, get a, I get a pre right. look at all of your guys' predictions. So I can confirm that Kobe actually. Whoa! Oh! Whoa, look at the hot swap. That bait and switch. Real I love time it. time updates. Woo! That's, that's impressive. Mark, you're sitting at that 500 record right now. You have confidence in your picks today to, to finally move above that 500 mark? There were a lot that I think had like clear favorites, but you can make a case for like the fact we heard, you know, Optics early game is the best in the league. Mm -hmm. For the most part, 100 Thieves is pretty slow. Clutch versus Golden Guardians, I think, was another one. And FlyQuest versus C9. So even though all of us are pretty aligned, I actually do think there's a fair... There are closer matchups than that yeah. might suggest. So yeah. why why do you have confidence in Clutch over Golden Guardians where the other three chose... Uh, well, Guardians? we... <laughs> I know why he did. <laughs> do you? Oh, oh, I think it's the stocks. <laughs> I think it's what's coming up next. Oh, okay. The, the stocks played a part in it, but both those had the same reasoning behind them. <laughs> part of it was um, we had Hooney on the dive, and he had a lot of positive things uh, to say about okay. how Clutch are uh, kind of coming back and building, uh, even though they have this big loss streak uh, built up. I really do feel like their schedule this week are all winnable games, and I feel like they're going to make that big push now. Kobe sees money, and he, yeah. goes, he <laughs> goes for money. That's really what this is all about. Before we jump into the LCS stock market ourselves, we've got some sound advice from a savvy sage when it comes to ELO gains. Check it out. 
Thanks, Das. The state of the LCS stock market has seen a few earthquakes in recent weeks. Most notably, TL do bleed. But don't worry, friends, the sky isn't falling on TL. I'm saying stay, stay holding on to those shares. One team that is making a climb in the market is TSM. A couple weeks ago, this team was a hard sell. But now they come into this week, uh, why didn't I buy two weeks ago? TSM show new signs of life and have gotten the silent throngs once again chanting TSM, TSM, TSM. But before you start calling your trader, I want to sound a note of caution. There are next four games look scary, and I'm not one that gets scared. Just ask this guy. Isn't he adorable? They're going up against CLG, FlyQuest, Fox, and Cloud9, and all the teams that are tied with them or ahead in the standing. So if they win, they could see that line continue to climb, but there are no free wins in these next two weeks. Finally, Clutch Gaming are on a long downslide. I'm saying sell, sell, or should you? Clutch's schedule light up the next two weeks, but buy low and wait for them to pick up wins versus their neighbors in the standings, and then sell high. That's just science. <laughs> well, let's check back into the LCS stock market to see whether you'll take Riv's advice to recover your portfolios. First, let's take stock of where all three of you stand. These, of course, are your portfolios as of two weeks ago, your net gains and losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, neither of us really made huge gains or losses. Plus 21, negative 52. Plus High 17. up over 5K still. So he's got a decent lead over the other two of you, but by no means is that an insurmountable lead within the next two weeks of play. Right, I mean, like, look at look at C9. They went plus 67 this week. Golden Guardians plus 82. So if you had picked up a number of those, you would have gone flying up. Unfortunately, we all just kind of picked a bunch of two and two teams. Again, that's a reminder of the stock prices for each of our teams coming into this week. So with those stock prices in mind and their next four games ahead of them, Kobe, let's take a look at your portfolio. Oh, that's my why God. He Clutch to win. There I'm, it is. I'm tired of these small gains. <laughs> dash. Win so big what, you're go going, home. So you're going for big losses? Everybody's going <laughs> up or down 50 points or whatever. Yeah. You know, there. I feel like there's a very good chance looking at the schedule for Clutch Gaming. All of the games are winnable games to me. So even if they only go two and two, they win 50% of these winnable games, they're still going to win me money because True. they are the lowest ELO of all of the teams. Right. You saw that line? They're almost at the bottom. <laughs> they're under 400 they're bottom out. per share right now. And I feel like it's just too good of a deal to pass up. Um, I did also like how, you know, Riv was looking at TSM, and TSM are about where they started the season, mm -hmm. but most people feel like they're on an upswing. So that was another one I was considering. I just think it's funnier to go all in. All uh, in. I, I appreciate it. it. So I'll either go to the top and... Uh, We're go. mooning. We're mooning. We're fall from the sky. <laughs> all right, well, let's talk about Golden Guardians here for a moment, because I think that's a lot right. of squad people are curious about. And it's one of the things I wanted to highlight kind of even with the Clutch Gaming thing, is if you look at the Team Liquid loss, kind of dead center of the screen, uh, and see how much they, they lost in that in terms of their ELO. It was around 20-ish, 20 25, which is not a very big loss, all things considered, and they're still way up there. So I think not only taking into account like expected wins and losses, but who they're expected to lose to, because TL is the highest value team. If you lose them, it's not the end of the world. So right. like Kobe was saying, the neighbor's value is actually really high. If you beat your neighbors or someone above you, that's when you can see a lot of gains. So the, the clutch pickup, I kind of like a little bit, which is why if you run my trades, I bought one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I believed in it just a little bit. But I bought big... one also, 12 times. <laughs> your yeah. big ticket team is that 100 Thieves still, so you, you're you're counting on them continuing to improve, steadily improve here? Right, well, I think they had a zero two week last week, and I think that dropped their value enough. We're looking at their next couple games. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of similar to Clutch, where it's a lot of people in the middle of the standings that I think they can beat, uh, which is why I'm, they're kind of my big bet, and I think C9 and, and TL are, are always safe bets. They'll make you minimal returns right. every single time, it feels like. Looking, uh, yeah, looking at the schedule for both of those, I both thought that they had they have tougher some ones. losable games. Yep. And since they're so high rated, the, the shares are so expensive, right. it felt a little bit more risky than usual. I, I min-maxed it, though, so I only had $1 left over, which made me feel uh, really good about good. it. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. know if it was a good idea, but I was Super like, clean. this got me within $1 of yeah. maximum value. No, that's so. respect. I respect that quite a bit. Uh, of course, yeah, Cloud9 plays FlyQuest today, so that one will really move the oh, needle, yeah. win mm -hmm. or loss. Let's take a look at High's portfolio. He's not here to defend it, but he did send in his picks. He's also going heavy on clutch. Right. on clutch Gaming, but a much more diversified portfolio, taking a couple uh, sure bets, in a sense, with Cloud9 and TL, but then another couple risky picks in Echo Fox and Golden yeah, Guardians. Yeah, I think High has held on to a Cloud9 and Golden Guardian stock every single time, and those have paid out for him. Look, those are the two biggest earners from last week. That's how he still stays at the top and has been creeping up. So I he's think 
Yeah, I was going to say, that's that's a really good strategy as well. As this two weeks feels like everyone's playing people around them. So, like, Echo Fox and Golden Guardians, I think, play themselves in clutch. And I think 100 Thieves as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, all these teams, it feels like top half teams are playing each other and bottom half. So, there's going to be a big swing, I think, this week in the market. Well, I wish you both the best of luck over these coming two weeks. May the gains be ever I in may be favor. coming in to ask you for a loan <laughs> No, here. as the commissioner of the LCS stock market, <laughs> I will not goes hand out any loans. We've got 10 seconds until we head into game one. We're going to toss it out to the casters to get us into champ select.